，悉如安乐哲向世界讲好中华文化故事。We have to enable Western people to to take the Chinese tradition on its own terms, to understand it, and to understand how we can collaborate in making it a better world. 中国哲学智慧对世界有何深意 ？The world needs Confucianism. The world needs to think in terms of interdependence and relationality, and and win-win, as opposed to winners and losers. 风云对话专访北京大学哲学系人文讲习教授安乐哲。现年七十五岁的安乐哲是享誉世界的中西比较哲学家、汉学家和中国哲学典籍翻译家，现任北京大学人文讲习教授、美国夏威夷大学哲学荣誉教授、世界儒学文化研究联合会会长。大学时，安乐哲研修西方哲学，偶然的机会来到香港后，他接受了中国传统哲学的熏陶与塑造。五十多年间，他一直致力于中西哲学的比较和研究，其学术思想也被越来越多的人所熟悉。他倡导一多不分，认为宇宙的一切都是内在相系、相互构成，没有什么东西是超绝的分割独立，并主张用比较中西阐释欲境的方法论，让中国文化讲述自己。Professor Ames, hello. Good evening to you.、Um, please tell us briefly how did you get connected with China, Chinese culture, and philosophy? Was there any particular event or person that influenced you the most? Yeah, when I was、um, 18 years old, I had an opportunity to do a foreign exchange uh, student um, in Hong Kong, and so when I went to Hong Kong. I discovered a different world, a world that I hadn't seen before, and so I've spent a lifetime、uh, trying to understand that, that world. I've had two very um, fortunate um, uh, events in my life. One of them was the students that I encountered in Hong Kong. Like Chinese philosophy is in people, Chinese philosophy is not in books, and so I, I had these wonderful classmates. And then at the same time, I had some very distinguished teachers.、Um, a, a professor named Tang Junyi is very famous. Another professor, Lao Siguang, is very famous. And so, between the teachers and the students, I、uh, began a lifetime interest in China and Chinese culture. I know you have a lot of titles:、uh, sinologist, a writer, philosopher, and also translator. How do you view these different titles?、Um, I, I see them all as a piece. You know,、um, that the one and the many、uh, human beings are one and many at the same time. We're unique, but we have different aspects. And so, for me, translation is cultural translation. A translation is、um, is writing. It's philosophy. It's、um, it's it's much more than simply、um, translating one sentence into another. And currently, what are your、um, most researched areas?、Um, last semester at at Beida, I taught a course on ontology and zootology. That、um, in classical Greek philosophy. Everything begins from、uh, being, and so what, what that means basically is that the concept of God, that in the Western tradition is a concept of God that is perfect and unchanging, but in Chinese tradition, shang shang bu yi, you know, shang shang bu xi,、um, that、um, the idea of zoetology, zoe means life in Greek, and so the Chinese tradition is 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 ecological. It's、uh, genealogical,、um, and so these are two very different ways of of organizing the human experience. One of them is organized around God.、Um, uh, one of them is organized around relationships, around life, around growth. In An Le Zhe's eyes, the most important feature of Chinese culture is the relationship between people. This is the most important feature. 这也是中国文化对当今世界最重要的贡献
。与西方哲学不同，中国哲学是从家庭的小细胞开始的，讲求修身、齐家、治国、平天下。在过程中，学以成人，追求的是共同的价值。个人修养是中国哲学的核心。安乐哲认为这一理念也契合当下的时代。他提出，进入二十一世纪以后，中国哲学对话进入了一个大变革新时代，中国哲学将成为世界哲学与文化发展的重要理论资源。And you've been studying Chinese philosophy for many years, and you just mentioned、uh, Chinese philosophy is. Uh, taught around relationships, and so how do you think Chinese philosophy and its way of thinking has impacted your life and work?、Um, if、uh, it hasn't、uh, impacted your life and work,、uh, then you don't understand Chinese philosophy. That、uh, Chinese philosophy is all about jiao hua. It's all about、uh, transformation through、um, learning, through education. And so,、um, when you read a Western philosophical book, it's really teaching you a methodology. It's teaching you、uh, important ideas and so on. But if you read the Lunyu or if you read the Mengzi,、uh, the the goal is to change your person, is to make you into a better person through、uh, understanding、uh, role models, through understanding、um, how to grow relationships. If you were to name、uh, one or two things that you think are most important or most impressive to you in Chinese philosophy, would would they be?、Um, they would be the difference between a human being, which is Greek, and a human becoming, which is、uh, Confucian. A human becoming is shou shen qi jia zhi guo ping tian xia. That that human in the Confucian tradition is not something that you are; it's something that you become. At Bei Da、um, in 2018, we had the World Congress of Philosophy. So 8,000 philosophers came from all over the world, and the topic that was chosen was very Chinese. It was, was very Confucian. It was xue yi cheng ren. Learning to become human—that human is something that we have to achieve. It's not something that we begin from. And、uh, you published、uh, a new book called、uh, "Sheng Sheng's Chinese Philosophy: An Le Zhe's Philosophical Selection." Now, what kind of Chinese philosophical concept does "Sheng Sheng" here represent? "Sheng Sheng" is really the life of the tradition. China is. More people than Africa. China is almost twice the population of of a combined Eastern and Western Europe, and so the diversity that is China is 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 continental. It's a continental civilization, and so then the question is, how did this continental civilization stay together for so long, four thousand years and counting? There's been a China. And so, how did it stay together? And my argument would be the the concept of xiao, and the the concept of xiao is all about sheng sheng.、Uh, xiao is each generation、um, inheriting、uh, the living cultural tradition, embodying it. Like when you when you look at the picture of your grandmother, you can see the the, the similarities between yourself and your grandmother, and so in in the most superficial way, we embody the tradition with our bodies, but we also do in terms of language and music and and、um, and philosophy, and so what China has done successfully is each generation has taken the responsibility of inheriting the tradition, understanding it. Um, writing commentary on it and expanding upon it, using it to address the pressing issues of its time, and then when the hair turns white, passing it on to the next generation and recommending them that they do the same. And so this is Sheng Sheng, the Sheng Sheng of Chinese philosophy, living Chinese philosophy. Reminds me of Sheng Sheng Bu Xi. So it's 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 continuity, it's inheritance,、uh, it's filial piety. Now we look at the important values of Chinese philosophy,、um, some of which you just mentioned. How do you think it might solve some of the problems and challenges、uh, that we're facing in the world? 
using the wisdom uh, of I, Chinese philosophy? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, my uh, commitment to understanding and internationalizing uh, Confucian philosophy is not simply to celebrate China, but the world really needs to move from a kind of ideology of individualism, where, where individual people, individual corporations, individual countries are simply uh, seeking their own self-interest. All this does is it produces a kind of anarchy. It produ it's a zero-sum way of thinking about how we live in the world. Confucianism wants to teach us something different. Confucianism wants to say that if your neighbor does better, you do better. The only way that I can become a good teacher is by having a good student. And the better the student, the better the teacher. That we come together or not at all. And so this idea of, of collaboration is the direction that the world has to move in. And so the idea of, of internationalizing Confucianism, making Confucianism not, not only um, uh, understandable to cultures outside of China, but also as a as a as an international resource for a changing world cultural order the world needs confucianism the world needs to think in terms of interdependence and relationality and and win-win as opposed to winners and losers安乐哲曾获得过包括2020年度中国政府有益奖在内的多个奖项，在他看来，这些奖项可以鼓励外国学者翻译中国著作，传播中国文化。英译中国典籍的方法是为了让中国哲学发出自己的声音，用中国哲学自身的世界观让人们理解中国哲学。安乐哲先后翻译了《孙子兵法》《淮南子》。《论语》《道德经》等七部典籍，他对中国哲学的独特理解和翻译方法，改变了一代西方人对中国哲学的看法，使中国经典的深刻含义越来越为西方人所理解。Now, taking your experience、um, as an example, how do Western scholars these days study or approach Chinese classics and、uh, Chinese philosophy? Uh, my my uh, my rant in my classes is what you have to remember, Nancy, is that China was introduced into the Western world by missionaries, and so the language that translates China, Tian is capital H heaven, Yi Ren Yi the Yi is righteousness. Righteousness in English means behaving in a way that that、uh, obeys the will of God. If the Confucian tradition doesn't have a god, then you don't have you don't have righteousness.、Uh, Li Li is a very very you know complex idea, but we translate it as ritual. And so, the problem is that、uh, this this Chinese tradition has been in, in, interpreted through a vocabulary that really converts it into a kind of Christianity. And so, if you go to、um, to Beida、uh, Zong Tu Shu Guan, and you look for Chinese philosophy, you look for Yi Jing, for for Zhong Yong, for Zhuangzi, Laozi. Don't look in the philosophy section. You have to look in the religion section. And so, the kind of of Chinese、uh, philosophy that we have abroad is really one that has been interpreted through a lens that is not Chinese. And so, my job at Beida. When I when I arrive at Beida, I've been at Beida since 1985, coming and going. But my job has always been to try to prepare the next generation of of Chinese professors to to give them a language, give them a vocabulary, give them a, a, a strategy for communicating their Confucianism to the world. Okay, and speaking of which, what do you think are some of the differences、um, in translators、uh, when we speak of Chinese translators and Western translators like yourself? My uh, teacher, uh, uh, Di 
Tsi Lao, Liu Dianjue. Uh, I didn't mind that his uh, his uh, Chinese was so much better than me. I mean, I was always sitting at his knee. But really, what really exasperated me was that his English was much better than mine. He would say to me, Roger, do you mean careful or do you mean cautious? And I would say, what is the difference? And he would explain to me what the difference is between careful and cautious. That when you learn a, a language uh, as a second language, very often you have a, a deeper understanding of the tradition. When, when I when I look at um, at uh, Chinese terms, I'm very interested. I go back to Jiagu Wen. I want to understand what. A, a Chinese character has meant historically the evolution of a Chinese character. I want to understand what Tian means. I want to understand what Tao means. And I want to explain that to Western readers. That's a very interesting point that you've just raised, that uh, as a second language learner of a language, your understanding of the words um, is actually uh, could be deeper than native speakers, like the examples that you just Absolutely. gave. Absolutely. And how did you how did you decide which books that you were going to translate? The, the books that you translated, I mean, some of them are sold very well uh, overseas. What's the reason yeah. uh, of choosing these works, and uh, why do you think they were very successful? It's because it's it's. Um... Uh, Sheng Sheng the Zhongguo Jiexue, that um, the whole concept of Chinese philosophy is jia gan, sheng zheng, um, is to set the root and to grow it therefrom. And so I'm an old man now, Nancy, and um, I still am in the Han Dynasty, that I spent my time trying to understand the root, to go back to the beginning. And so I've translated a lot of the uh, the classics, um, but I never have. I haven't gotten past Huainanzi. Um, Huainanzi is my is 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 my most recent threshold when it comes to the tradition. Um, the the Chinese tradition is very rich, very long, and, and any one of us can only understand a bit of it. 随着全球政治经济秩序加速变革，大国竞争博弈加剧。和平与发展的时代主题正面临着严峻的挑战。然而，早在两千多年前，中国古代先贤便提出“何时生物，同则不济”。著名思想家孔子所言：“君子和而不同，小人同而不和。”让和而不同的哲学思想成为极具活力的中华文化精髓。国与国之间，文明与文明之间。以儒家为代表的东方智慧，又能为消弭纷争提供何种方案 ？And you voiced your、um, concern that we currently live in area、uh, in an era of crisis.、Uh, for example, the unprecedented pandemic、um, that we're experiencing now is one of the problems the world is facing. We also face issues of global warming. Population explosion, and one of the most important contributions, I think, is it offers an alternative to Western individualism.、Um, so, what do you think of、uh, Confucianism in this regard?、Um, uh, there's a, a very important、um, Chinese philosopher, contemporary philosopher named Zhao Tingyang, and Zhao Tingyang、um, talks about Tian Xia Ti Xi. And he takes a line from the Lao Tzu, "Yi Tian Xia Guan Tian Xia," you know, looking at the world as a world. And so that's where we have to go, Nancy. We have to abandon the idea that the nation state is our、uh, basic platform. We have to understand ourselves relationally. Our, our lives are lived at a much more basic level. Than the abstraction of a nation state, you know,、um, we we our culture, our language, our music, our、um, ways of living flow across borders. We're all human beings, and so we have to. This is what Confucianism、um, has to offer us. That、um, when when we use this term "e duo bufen," it, it's a recognition that 
that anything is what it is by virtue of the quality of relationships it's able to cultivate that not only individual people but individual states that we have to cultivate the relationships that obtain among uh, uh, these these states what what is proven to be the case is that the Westphalian model of modern nation states individual equal states has proven to be woefully inadequate to address the problems that you're identifying pandemic global warming environmental degradation food and water shortage all of the, the these problems where china can't solve them america can't solve them europe can't solve them but if we work together we can we can solve them and so this is the confucian contribution the idea of interdependence the idea of of edo bufen you previously said um, in china people in the era of globalization need to strengthen the self understanding how should we understand this statement one of the china has gone through a very difficult period when you look back in uh, yuan ming yuan at the back of the park there's a sign that says wu wang guo qi and so china has really suffered um by uh, being mistreated um by um foreign cultures and western imperialism has done has done bad things to china and so that what that has done is and for young people they have kind of lost confidence in their own tradition that that shen dai hua has become shi feng hua and there's nothing wrong with shi feng hua but it should be dong shi feng hua that what we need to do is we need to take all of our cultural resources and find our future together um by uh, combining uh these these resources and so my role has always been to to try to grow like i i don't in china has many many very distinguished confucian philosophers da ru you know there's a whole bunch of guo qi yong chan lai uh, jiang shang long you know i mean there's so many different um uh, contemporary uh, chinese philosophers who are so distinguished my contribution is really to try to internationalize it that that beethoven was originally the the music of german elite and then beethoven became european music and now beethoven is world music you you can't have new years in japan without beethoven's ninth symphony 50 performances of beethoven's ninth symphony and so when confucianism becomes international it becomes something different it becomes something bigger it becomes something that is interpreted from all different perspectives and and that's a good thing that's Shang Shang. You mentioned uh, one of your roles or your goal is to help um, Chinese culture and Chinese philosophy be understood overseas and to help Chinese students and scholars internationalize so that uh, we can better tell China's stories. How do you think this process has worked over the past few years? I think it's not worked very well. I think that um, what happened, like we all know that from uh, Deng Xiaoping, this rise of China began, uh, but, but it, well, it didn't really become evident outside of China until about the year 2000. Then all of a sudden, China became an increasingly powerful economic and political force in the world. And what it did was it startled the rest of the world, that the, the world is dominated by liberal values. Um, that Europe and America really have dominated uh, the world. And so the rise of China has really startled the world. And when the world doesn't understand China, it frightens the world. And so this kind of anti-China hysteria, you know, that we see in the Western press, that we see in Western politics, I mean, it's understandable. My response, Nancy, would be, you know, we don't, we don't, it's not, China will be here 10 years from now. China will be here 20 years from now. What we have to do is we have to enable Western people to, to take the Chinese tradition on its own terms, to understand it and to understand how we can collaborate in making it a better world. There's, there's no future without China. It's that simple. I mean, China is, is certainly a country, but China is the diaspora. 
Vancouver is China, you know, that, that Southeast Asia is China, that, um, that China is a big part of humanity. And so the world has to understand this, this world better. And this is what uh, you've been trying to do. And this is what we're trying to do with this program as well. Right. And finally, um, yes. And finally, Professor Ames, um, could you share with us one of your favorite Chinese sayings or Chinese writings, um, if possible, in Chinese? Sure. One um, a statement that I would share comes from the, the I Jing, the Book of Changes, and it's Tian Di Zhi Da De Yue Sheng, that the greatest capacity of the cosmos is life itself, that life is the greatest meaning in the world. When you think of education, when you think of morality, when you think of beauty, that it's all about growth, that we grow things, 